Hi, today in this tutorial, we are going to learn when to use throws keyword in Java. All right, so it's a very confusing thing for a lot of beginners that when to use throws and when to use try and catch block. So to make you understand this, I'm going to use this. So this is Paneer, right? So I haven't made it. I just have purchased it from the market because I want to make some Paneer curry. So this is a very common thing. Right. So using this paneer, I can make paneer butter masala and using this paneer, I can also make paneer chili and I can also make paneer manchurian or I can also make a paneer pizza. Right. So the thing is over here, this is common. This is a common thing. And using this common thing, I can make some specific dish like paneer butter masala, paneer chili or paneer manchurian or paneer pizza. Right. So this is specific, but this is common, right? Okay, so we can say that there are two types of people who are making common thing and who are making specific thing by using this common thing, all right? So the reason why I gave you this example, because I want you guys to familiar with these two words, common and specific, right? Okay, so let's go ahead. Okay, so now let's understand this programmatically. Okay, so in the context of exception handling, we can write two types of method. The first one is common method and the second one is specific method. So now let's understand about what a common method is. Okay, just think about paneer, right? So if you want to make paneer curry, then you don't need to make paneer. You don't need to produce paneer, right? You just can go to the market and you just can purchase paneer and you can make I mean, you can use it inside your curry. Okay. So similarly, the common methods always deals with the common requirements, which are suitable for all the Java programmers. Okay. So let's talk about this method percent. Okay. So we haven't created this method. The Sun Microsystem people already created this method and they said, dude, if you have a requirement, where you need to convert a string to an integer, then you don't need to write logic for that. You don't need to create your methods for that. We already have a method, which is percent. You just can use this method and you can convert a string to integer, right? And this method can be used by any programmers. I mean, any Java programmers, right? So this is a common method, all right? Okay, so the common method can be used by any of the programmers in any of their application because the common method meets the common requirement of a programmer, okay? But what about a specific method, okay? Just think about paneer chili, right? You are making paneer chili because being an individual, this is your requirement. That might be your requirement, okay? Being a, another individual, my requirement may be something else, maybe paneer pizza, right? Okay, so what is a specific method? So a specific method always deals with the specific requirements of an individual. Okay, so what I mean by that, let's talk about this method, my method one. I am creating this method, right? I have created this method because I want to perform some specific tasks for my end users. Let's say this method is going to be used by the end user, not by the programmer. Okay, so this is a specific method, right? I'm performing some specific task over here for the end users. Okay, let's say who are going to use my app or who are going to use my website. I'm developing this method for them. Okay, okay, so now we understand that there are two types of developer. The common method developer, and specific method developer okay so if you are a common method developer right if you are creating common methods which is going to be used by the programmers by the java programmers right and if you are creating or if you are developing any common method and your common method is having any kind of exception if your common method is throwing you any kind of exception then being a common method developer you need to express those exception by using throws keyword okay and similarly if you are a specific method developer and if your methods is going to be used by the end user not by the programmer and if your method is having any kind of exception if your method is throwing you any kind of exception then being a specific method developer this is your duty to handle those exception by using try and cast block
Okay, so now let's understand this with a clear cut example. Okay, so when to use throws and when to use try and cast block. Let's go for an example and let's see it how it works. All right, guys, so now let's create a common method. So let's say there is a method over here called parse int. So if we talk about this method called parse int, then I haven't developed it. The people at Oracle, or you can say the Sun Microsystem people, has created this particular method. And they have given this method with Java API. And they said, if you have Java installed in your computer, you are free to use this method. You can use this method easily. But now the thing is, the people who have developed this method called parseInt, they said, dude, you can use this method in any of your application, but whenever you are using this method, be careful. There is a chance that your application may gonna throw you an exception called number format exception. So now let's say there are two different people and they want to use this particular method called parseInt in their application, okay? So now let's say there is a guy who is creating an app called employee app, all right? And there is an, another guy who is creating an, another app called student app, all right? So this guy who is creating this app called employee app has this class area. So let's say this is his class called employee app or something. And inside his class, he has a method called void login. So he want to build his login uh, features uh, for this particular app called employee app. Okay. All right. But you can see this particular method called login method is a specific method. And the reason why I'm saying it's specific because this particular method is specific to this particular application called employee app isn't it so the people who is using this particular application called employee app they're going to use this particular method isn't it okay so now let's understand this guy who is trying to create this particular application want to use this particular method called parse int inside his application okay so let's say he want to use this method called parse int over here inside his application or inside his method so this is a common method and uh, you know that this parse int method accept a string as this argument. So as you can see over here, this guy is passing 101 as a string over here to this particular method. So 101 can be his employee ID, let's say. Let's say this is his employee ID, all right? And now, as you know, this parse int method is going to convert this 101, which is a string over here, to an integer. So if you're putting 101 as a string over here, now this is going to return to me 101 as an integer. But let's forget it, this really doesn't matter, right? Okay, so the thing is, you want to use this particular method over here inside his application, okay? So now let's say this guy who is creating the student app, he also has this class area. So let's say this is his class called student app or something, okay? So now inside his class, this guy is also want to create an login application, okay? He want to build some login feature, okay, for his app called student app. And again, this login method is specific to this particular student app, all right? So the people who are going to use this particular app called student app is going to use this method called login, isn't it? Okay, now this guy, while building this particular method or while he is developing this particular method, he want to use this method called parseInt, okay? So he said, okay, I don't want to write so many codes over here, so let me use a predefined method, okay? So he want to use this particular method, parseInt, okay? So now let's say this 111 is his uh, student ID, okay? Okay, so now let's come back to this particular application called employee app. So now let's say this guy who is developing this particular application called employee app is done with his development process right and he has created a app like this right so he has a text box over here where the employee is going to enter his id and they need to click on submit and they're they're logged into the employee app application okay okay so now let's say an employee has entered his id over here called 101 and he clicked on submit right so 101 will be passed into this percent now 101 is converted to uh, you know an integer which is 101 and now this application understand that this 101 is a valid number and he is happily logged into this application okay all right that's fine but let's say there is a very stupid employee right what he did so what he did he come to over here and he enter 
some characters, something like this. Now we can see this particular percent method has changed. So it just took this particular stops over here, SLD, FJS, whatever. This is a string, right? So whatever he entered, this particular method just took those stops over here, took those string. Okay, what you can say. So now the problem arises. Now you just see this particular method called percent accept a string as this argument. That's fine. He's putting a string as this argument, but this string is not a number. So as this string is not a number, this particular set of string or this particular set of characters cannot be converted to a number. Now this particular system got failed because this is not a number, right? So if it is being converted, this is going to give some error. This is going to give some exception. And what is that exception? They already warned you. The people who have developed this common method, they have already warned you that there is a chance you may get number format exception. All right. So in this case, this particular system fails and this guy is going to see an exception in his screen called number format exception. But the problem is, as this guy is a non-technical guy and as this stupid employee does not have any idea on Java programming, he doesn't know what this number format exception is. OK, so here comes the problem. So being a specific method developers, you should be handle this kind of exception in your program. So if you are knowing that, well, I'm going to use this particular method called percent. Uh, that's fine. But whenever I am using this, there is a chance that it may throw number format exception whenever we are putting some invalid string over here. So in that time, I should tell my end user that this is not a valid input. OK, please enter a valid input for employee ID. So so to deal with that, this kind of problem, what I can do, I can wrap this code up with a try block and immediately followed by a cache block. And this particular cache block handles this particular exception called number format exception. Now this method is throwing you an exception, right? Called number format exception. So let us handle that with a cache block. And if in any point of time, an invalid input is get entered to the employee ID, then you should throw an custom exception saying don't enter characters for employee ID. You should enter only numbers. You should tell that to the end user. So suppose an employee is coming and entering some strings over here into this particular box called employee ID and he's clicking on submit, he will get an error message saying don't enter characters for employee ID. Now he will understand that, OK, I shouldn't enter any characters over here. Instead, I need to write some numbers. OK, and he'll be aware of that. And, uh, you know, he'll just try to do that process once again. OK, so now if we talk about this particular app called student app, here is the same thing as well. So let's say this guy is done with his development process and created this particular app, which has a text box, which accepts students ID over here. and if you are entering valid student ID, there is no problem. And if you're clicking on submit, you'll be locked into the student app application. But if you are not putting any valid input, if you're putting some invalid input right over here, then you can see over here that this percent method is taking an invalid input, which is going to fail this particular application and is going to raise an error or raise an exception called number format exception into the log screen. But here, the student who is logging in, he cannot understand that what number format exception is. So being a specific method developer, you should take the responsibility to wrap this particular method with a try block followed by a cache block. And you should generate your custom user defined error message saying don't enter characters for student ID. OK, so now the student will understand that, OK, I shouldn't enter any characters over here. Instead, I should enter some numbers and, you know, he can rectify his input. All right. OK, so now here is the most important question. When to use the throws keyword? OK, and the answer is whenever you are creating any common method at that time, you don't need to handle the exception by using the try and catch. You have to throws the exception by using the throws keyword. Because as the common method developer, you don't know where your method is going to be used. You don't know somebody using your method inside an employee application. 
and somebody use your method inside a student application and you don't know wherever your method is being used so if you don't know where your method is being used then it doesn't make sense to create or to generate user defined error messages so being a common method developer you never have to handle your exception those your method throws by using a try or cache block instead you have to throw those exception using the throws keyword in method heading so that whenever your method is being used inside a specific method the guy who is writing those specific method he has to handle those exception according to his application for an example this is an employee application and the developer of this particular application has to specify don't enter characters for employee id which is a very specific error message to this particular application and similarly the student app developer has to specify don't enter characters for student id which is a specific user defined error message related to this particular app right so the point is really clear being a common method developer you have to throw your exception by using the throws keyword and being a specific method developer you have to handle those exception by using try and cache block and you have to generate the custom error messages which should be user friendly okay so this is what the concept is uh, so i'm all tired right now so i'm gonna stop this video right now and in the next tutorial i'm gonna tell you how to create a uh, common method using throws keyword programmatically so we're gonna dive into eclipse and we're gonna create few common methods using throws keyword and we are also going to use those common methods inside our program okay so a lot of the things in the store don't forget to watch that tutorial and to get the notification for that tutorial do subscribe to my channel and stay tuned so i'll see you in the next video till then happy coding